Well, good morning from just outside Mount Vernon, Washington, a bit north of Seattle. It's an area I've been coming to ever since I was a kid, but I've never done a photography episode up here, and I figured today would be a good day. Looks like we got a dry weather window. Uh, it's actually kind of clear this morning, which is nice, but I think it's going to get a little cloudy as we move on in the day. I found myself asleep in my car outside of this gas station. Um, been tired this morning, so I had to get a quick power nap in. But there's a cool little coffee stand um, underneath this big 76 sign, so I'm going to start out the morning by taking a photo of that as we have kind of this blue hour going on. It's good to be back. It's been a while. A couple of months since I've gone out and shot, unfortunately. So, happy to get back on the horse. Maybe one fifteenth of a second, F5.6. Uh-oh, first stop is a gas station, second stop's an old motel. It's looking like it might be one of those days. I'm gonna try a little something different on this one, and that is to throw an ND on the lens. On the left side of the frame is gonna be the motel, but on the right side of the frame is gonna be this highway that's got a bunch of traffic on it right now. And I'm gonna try to do a pretty slow shutter speed, kind of get some motion blur uh, from the cars. Of course, now I'm wishing I didn't put Portrait 800 in because I'd like to get this, this shutter speed even longer. Right now it's looking like it's going to be about six seconds. And that's at F22 with the five stop ND on. Moving a bit closer now, we're gonna get a more traditional photo of this guy. Just came around the other side, I'm gonna get a photo of the reception area with this old Dodge Stratus. Parked in front, looks pretty cool. Pretty cool old building off to the side of the road here. Looks like an old uh, grain refinery or something. I'm not sure what this is exactly. So once again, I'm gonna try to get some motion blur from the traffic off to the left side of the frame. I don't really know why I'm trying that today, but it seems like an interesting concept. All right, here's the window we need right here. I'm just outside of this lumber mill and there's some old train tracks that go into it and there's a train car parked there and I think I can get a cool composition with the train the lumber mill in the background hopefully. I'm not super thrilled on the composition uh, of this one but I want to get a shot with the train and then some of the wood stacks in the background and this seems to be the best way to do it. So I got two frames left on this roll. I'm gonna shoot one with the train in the center of my composition. I think I like this composition quite a bit better. F8 125th. Last frame of the roll, I'm getting a straight on shot of the train from the side. That's gonna be a problem. Oh, where's Willem's height when you need it? Here we go, all dialed in. Roll number one in the books. Uh, 
I've come across what looks like an oil refinery and it's got this big ominous smokestack off in the background. Kind of an interesting subject because it's all mechanical and industrial and definitely not the prettiest set of buildings I've ever seen. And it's smack dab in the middle of one of the most beautiful parts of Washington. So a lot of juxtaposition going on. I think it'll make for a few interesting photos. Rusty red on her shoulder, I was cleaning her shoe. When it clicked on the trot over in the bright morning. Stopped at Pass Lake, which is on the way to Deception Pass. There's some fishermen out on the lake. I kind of wish I had a longer lens. Welcome to Deception Pass. This is one of the coolest areas in Washington, in my opinion, and home to the Deception Pass Bridge, which runs over Canoe Pass and runs over Deception Pass. And then there's an island in the middle called Pass Island. And if you're familiar with the fjords of Norway at all, the fjord systems up there, this area and the Puget Sound in general in Washington is kind of like an American version of the Norwegian fjords. I like this shot with the stairs kind of going down into the corner of the frame and then the bridge going into the opposite direction. Sweet. I haven't said this once ever since I've had the Pentax, but this almost makes me want the 45 mil lens. Just a little bit wider might uh, might be really fun to work with on a subject like this. Over on the other side of Pass Island now, across Deception Pass, and there's a short hike down to North Beach where you can get a water level perspective of the bridge, which I've always wanted to see. So I'm gonna trek down there and hopefully get another uh, vantage point of this Deception Pass side of the bridge. Can she walk in the fire? Can she run? That's a pretty good view right there. Can she right make there. it up the mountainside? Can she make it down again? I have often wondered if she'll go and jump the fence. Will she keep on moving onward or stay in what could have been? Will she keep on moving onward or stay in what could have been? I got the Pentax on the tripod and I'm putting the ND filter back on because I want to get a real low shot close to the water and try to do a long, longer exposure to smooth out the water a bit, see if uh, that makes any difference. So yeah, we'll give it a go. All right, let's see if getting down and dirty is gonna be worth it. Well, who knows how this will go. F22, four seconds. Got this Fuji uh, 400 rated at 200, so. Well, this is probably gonna be super blown out, but we're still gonna give it a go. It's the final shot on this roll of Pro 400H. I'm gonna do a little self-portrait get all cute and uh, go sit on that log over there. Alicia always tells me to get my keys out of the photos, so I'll toss those. With the feeling pass. Would you Someone left their dab pen here. Should I just take a huge hit, see what happens? Maybe it's a DMT cartridge, that'd be fun. Okay, we are wrapped up at Deception Pass. 
finished the roll of Fuji. Shot two rolls on the day, and I'm gonna shoot one more at least. Well, we actually got the sun poking out a little bit, so I think it's time for some gold 200. I love this film stock, especially in sunny weather. And it is damn nice that it's pretty much the only medium format color film stock that's below 50 bucks for a five pack these days. So I will definitely be shooting quite a bit of it this year. Finally getting a photo of the infamous Shrimp Shack. Driven past this place so many times and I've always been curious about it. Why is there a Shrimp Shack here? Doesn't make any sense for there to be a Shrimp Shack here, but I'm kind of glad that there is. Got an interesting side of the road one. This cow pasture with the big old smokestack in the background is pretty interesting. A lot of contrast going on. If we serve the pieces, we get one more from a different angle. Through the 105 on, because I want to try to get an isolated shot of this one cow that's kind of right beneath the smokestack. This is such a peculiar scene. I want to make sure I cover it as best I can. I actually like the 105 for this because I can crop this barbed wire fence out in the foreground. When, it's to say when I'm shooting multiple subjects like this, like all these different cows, I really like when they're all separated. So I don't, I don't like when there's like a cow behind another cow. I like when there's grass in between yeah, each subject. I think it makes for a just much cleaner picture. All right, well, that's basically the whole roll on uh, <laughs> some cows, but I think it should be worth it. Okay, this is another roll of gold 200 going in, and I got a composition I want to shoot of that same smokestack oil refinery from across the water. This will be the final image I take of this subject, but I just find it so interesting and there's so many different ways to shoot it. Pretty cool old house in the middle of this field. It's all run down and abandoned. Try one with the 55 and try to get a little bit of this uh, waterway in the foreground. On and on it goes and never stops and the world keeps on turning. Oh. This truck's kind of cool, parked in front of this brick house. It's got some sunlight shining on it. I'm trying to get a photo of this uh, mill refinery structure. All right, one fifteenth of a second. You're up, here we go. Shots left. Saw this on the highway. It's completely collapsed 
old barn. Don't you know where the wild roses grow? I was driving away and I noticed that from the other kind of side of the buildings, you get a much better view as to just how collapsed that barn is. So I'm gonna shoot one more from the opposite angle. Going two seconds, F8. Okay, one shot left, and I think I already have my composition. I'm taking a stab at an overpass photo of the freeway. This is exactly the time of night that I want to shoot it at. Still got a little bit of color left in the sky, and I want to do a long exposure. I'm going to go f5.6, 8 seconds. Well, I of course had to wrap up the trip with a stop at an iconic dining establishment, good old Dick's Burgers. And this is the ultimate cap to a long day. But it was a fun day. And as I mentioned earlier, it's just good to be back out, taking photos, filming again, getting outside. The winter months here can be a bit difficult. So um, any opportunity to go out when it's not rainy or extremely cold is uh yeah you always got to take advantage of it anyway thanks for tuning in appreciate you watching as always hope everyone's uh staying safe having fun out there and i'll catch you next time cheers All right, everyone, that wraps up the video. Lastly, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for about five years now. I've built three websites using their platform, just utilizing the custom templates that they have available on the website. I've purchased all of my domains through Squarespace, and overall, the experience has been a breeze. They are fantastic to work with. They have 24-7 customer support if you run into any issues or need guidance with anything. They also have great features built right into the site like SEO strategies, marketing tools, and e-commerce management. So whether you're looking to start a photography portfolio, a website for your next business, or just a simple blog, Squarespace is gonna be the place to go. If you're looking to help support the channel and you wanna get 10% off your next purchase of a website or domain, you can check the link in the description or use code BRAY at checkout to do so.